I'm Trish Hall from Star Business Solutions and I also have with me Adam who's from Board. Uh, he's going to demonstrate the Board functionality. What are we covering today? Is who is Board? What is Board BI? Uh, specifically in relation to budgeting and forecasting. Uh, Adam's going to do a presentation on budgeting and planning and forecasting within Board and at the very end we'll have some questions and answers. Over many years of consulting in mid-sized businesses such as yours, uh, I've seen many cha companies challenged by their annual uh, month-end or, or year-end budgeting processes. Most ERP systems in this, in this space don't actually have an inbuilt budgeting and forecasting um, component. So many reach out to applications such as Board or more often than not, rely on spreadsheets. Uh, I have been looking for a solution for budgeting and forecasting outside of spreadsheets for some time. And uh, Board actually found us, as in STAR, uh, and having reviewed the application, they found that it's a great one for larger companies who have multiple departments, divisions, uh, operations in various states to do their budgeting in a, an efficient and effective manner. Um, Board, as, a, as the company, is also the name of the software. Board, the company, is headquartered in Switzerland, uh, but has many offices throughout the world, including Sydney and Melbourne. The company just focuses on build business intelligence software, but also encompasses what they call predictive analytics and performance management. And that's where the budgeting and forecasting components lie. Today, we are only focusing on budgeting and forecasting and planning, uh, because as uh, I mentioned, I see that as a real need for a number of our clients. Okay, why as a business would you prefer to, or would you uh, be a good idea to look to an application such as Board? It really is, um, spreadsheets are great, but once you start using many spreadsheets and having to uh, push those out to multiple departments or divisions or operational managers, um, you generally uh, then have issues in terms of um, uh, keeping control of those, having um, approvals happen within, that, uh, within those spreadsheets, knowing what figures have been changed and not changed, or uh, issues happening where a user will accidentally change a formula and then not you're not knowing about those formula changes until something doesn't quite make sense or doesn't add. There is also no version control often in spreadsheets um, and there can be conflict with um, what version was the latest version and so on. Also, many organisations such as yours would like to go through an approval process for their budgets. So have a, you know, an operations manager, for example, do their budget, so that might roll up to a general manager who should then approve those budgets, and then um, ultimately roll up to a financial uh, controller or CFO, and then to the CEO for the ultimate approval of those budgets to be then rolled in for the budgeting and uh, reporting and actual the budget reporting. Uh, like as it goes through the year. There is also then, as you go through the year, the forecast, you know, making forecasts and changing the original budget, but perhaps having reports that can then compare actual to budget, but also to forecast. So Adam will show you through those various aspects of the software. Um, if we can hold questions until the end, um, and then uh, as we go through, uh, as we finish the uh, presentation will go through those uh, questions for you. Handing it over to Adam now. Welcome, Adam. Hey, Adam, you there? Hi, hi, Trish. Yes, sorry, I started talking and forgot to take myself off mute. So, schoolboy error. Apologise. <laughs> so, yeah, good morning. Um, can you just let me know that you can see my screen okay now? I have made myself the presenter and showed my screen. 
Yes, good. Great stuff. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for um, joining us today. Uh, I'm going to talk you through uh, some of the some of the aspects of, of, of the board application. I'm going to talk you through a demonstration that we have for you. Um, now, uh, just a quick uh, stage setter, I suppose. This company, um, we're actually setting this in the future, so we're going to be in the year 2020. Uh, and for the purposes of this demonstration, that the financial year for this company starts in March and goes, uh, sorry, starts in April, goes through to March. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as we, I'm gonna simulate going through various aspects of the year. So I'm gonna kind of jump in at key moments, I guess, through the financial year and talk about some of the processes that you might want to undertake at, at those times of the year. So first of all, um, we're looking at the, the application within a web browser, so um, on-premise or, or cloud as, as fits your requirements. Um, what we've got on our first screen here is really a, a workflow. So we're kind of mapping out a process. So this, this mapping process can be tailored to your organization. You know, we're, we're not going to request that you fit into the, the way that we think you should do things. The process that you need to follow will be the process that can be mapped out and built for you. Um, you can see at the bottom that we've got this workflow. So some of the things that Trish was just uh, talking about in terms of getting some control over your, over your systems and over your procedures, being able to see where things are at. So at the moment, I'm at the beginning of the financial year, so uh, we've, we've got uh, nobody started. Everything's back to back to zero, if you like. And so we have um, 10, 10 entities or 10 people or 10 cost centers, whatever, whatever you need to plan at, um, are currently not started. So the first thing I wanted to show you is uh, I'm going to put on my financial controller hat and I'm going to just initiate a budget for the upcoming year. So first of all, uh, in the middle of the screen, we've got uh, a simple data table which is showing me the prior year actuals, and we've split those out by business units or, or departments, and then we've got some high-level uh, P&L lines. So you can currently see that my budget is zero. Um, on the left, we've got, sorry, first of all, on the right, we've got some buttons. So there are a number of ways in which you can see the budget. And once again, this is entirely down to a process that you need to follow. We can build um, a process that suits your requirements. I've just got some simple examples here. So for example, I might just want to say, I want to seed my budget to be 5% on the prior years. Uh, actual, so I can hit that button there, or I can make it 10% if I want to, just some very quick, simple drivers. Um, but I can also introduce some more sophistication if I need to. So on the left is a, an assumptions table. Uh, I've got that split out by the same uh, hierarchy, so by the business unit and also by the P&L lines. Um, and as we can see, um, my HQ, I'm going for 6%. For Victoria, I'm going for 11%. For New South Wales, 8.5% and so on and so forth. But I can also individually tweak. So maybe within HQ, I'm going to make the equipment. I want to make that 8%. And then for the staff training costs, I'm going to try and knock that back to about 2%. So I can make some individual adjustments um, at, a, at a lower level down in my hierarchy. So I'll just save those numbers down. And now if I run the last year actuals plus driver button, you can see that those um, individual drivers have been applied. So the New South Wales is 8.5, um, HQ is 8, sorry, 6, uh, with the exception of the ones I've changed. So equipment, you can see there is 2 and staff training, we can see, sorry, equipment is eight, and staff training is two. So I've very quickly seeded a budget, but now I might also want to just make some, some little tweaks uh, as I see fit. So because these cells are yellow, uh, that indicates that we can enter data into those cells. So let's first of all um, take our equipment, 3.5 million. I'm gonna round that up to four million, and I can use a shortcut M for million. And you can see that populates in. Now again, it's turned red, so that means I've changed the number, but I haven't committed it to my database. You can see the variance has been recalculated, uh, as has the variance percentage. Now within board, we have uh, what we call reverse algorithms, which I think is a very powerful feature to allow you to further manipulate your numbers. So maybe uh, whilst this is a calculation, I can also data entry into this cell. So if I was to come into here and maybe knock that variance back to 650,000, uh, and then commit that number. You can see that it when reverse calculates, first of all, my budget, but also my variance. And I can do the same with my variance percentage. So maybe I'm not gonna get away with 19.8% variance. Let's try and put 15% in there. And once again, you can see that the variance has been recalculated as has my budget. It now stands at 3.7 million. 
I'll just save that number down so I can commit it to my database. Now that number is a top down, so that will be pushed down to all the months within that year, the current the current year, and conversely, it would also be pushed down the equipment hierarchy. So all the all the uh, elements below the, the equipment will also uh, that number will be spread down proportionally uh, to the prior year figures. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm going to seed that uh, out to my uh, budget holders, and I can do that by invoking the button here, and I'm going to send that out to my budget holders. So now another window opens, and I'm going to now simulate being one of those budget holders. Uh, I'm going to come into the screen that's configured for me. Um, I'm actually the HQ uh, budget holder, so uh, the, the screen's been pre-filtered for me. Um, it could also uh, invert security here, so uh, maybe you want to make sure that only certain people get to um, enter budget into certain places. So um, you, you can certainly invoke security there to make sure that the appropriate people are adjusting and seeing budgets. So you can see here my number of 3.7. You can see how now it's been spread down uh, under the underneath itself into the months. So of course I can now come in here and individually change um, month records. And you can see that that number's changed red, as has the total. So now my, my change at the bottom is now rolling up to the top. I've also got some blanks here because there's no prior year actuals. So let's just put a few numbers in here just to fill in a few blanks. And again, you can see that number at the end of the year change. I can also uh, pipe across. So for example, this star training cost is a bit sporadic. I'm going to try and even that out a little bit. So I can use the right uh, indicator here. I'll just put a number of 1500 in. And then that will just pipe 1500 all the way across to the end. And then once I've got my number at the end, I could also change that back as well. So maybe we'll just knock that back to 15,000. And then it will readjust the numbers per month uh, back down again. Let's just save those down. I also now want to just introduce you to a slightly more advanced product, uh, sorry, data entry features using the lock and spread feature. So now I'm, I'm entering into a window, and I can do a little bit more, uh, more, more here. So I can I can select multiple cells, for example. So let's select, uh, yeah, what's that five six months. We'll take the first six months of the year. Maybe I want to just. Uh, reduce those a little bit. So now I can start come over here and I've got some arithmetic constants that I can use. So I'm just going to choose the multiply option. I'm going to go uh, 0.9 and then just commit that number down and save. Now I can also come back to these cells and I can lock them. So now you see it's turned white. So now if I was to come to the end of the year and change that number to be I'll just go back to 4 million, for example. You can see my 4 million has changed, as has the remaining six months. But the first six months that I've marked down just now have been unaffected. So they've been set um, as I want them to be, to, to be. And I can also um, apply those functions in columns as well as um, rows, or both at the same time. So I could, you know, I could select a, a whole set of cells and, um, and and apply any function or arithmetic calculation that I choose. So I'm happy with those numbers now. I've done my my bottom uh, my bottom up budgeting, uh, and I now want to submit those to my line manager. So I have the big submit button, uh, and I can do that, and I can run a process which will then tell me it's been submitted. You can see that all my cells have turned white, so that means I can no longer uh, enter numbers into those cells until such times that um, my budget has been reviewed by my by my line manager. You can also see, of course, that my status has changed to submitted, so I can see where I am at the process. Um, and that review process can then take place. Uh, the manager can then review my budget and send it back to me if they, need, if they don't like it and reopen it for me so I can come back in and, and enter numbers. We can also attach commentary to that, so the manager might also write some comments as to why that's been rejected. And then I can come in, see those comments, make, make the adjustments accordingly, resubmit, possibly even resubmit a comment back to see what I've done. Um, we can also track the changes, so you can record like, the, the date, for example, when the submission was made. We can also keep an audit trail of the previously changed numbers if, if that's really what you need to do. So let's close this window for now. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn back to this screen, and I'll just hit the back button over here. And of course, now what we can see down the bottom is that the not started has changed to 9. My submitted has changed to 1, because I have one um, uh, entity has now submitted. 
So very useful for a, for a budget controller uh, to, to very quickly see whereabouts they are um, in a cycle and, and, and then they can see exactly who they need to follow up um, for more completion of works. So now with the budget set for the year, I'm now going to just move forward a few months in the year. We'll go to the second quarter. Uh, and what I'd like to do now is just run you through uh, a month-end process, for example. So here I'm in the month of June. Uh, so that's where the system is. I'm in August, and I now want to submit or bring in the July numbers. So the first thing to do is just update the period. So currently I'm in June. Um, this is just a screen for, pe for people who might want to do exchange rates, for example. Not everybody will, uh, but maybe you've got some business in New Zealand, for example, where you might want to, to, to take account of that. So I'm just going to update my period. We'll pick the next available month, which has been pre-selected for us. And then we see that now July is now the data entry field, and then we can go ahead and enter exchange rates if we need to, uh, to, to, to account for entities that might be in a different exchange rate to us. Of course, there's some charting at the bottom there, um, just so you've got a view of the history of the exchange rates, if that's what you need. So having done that, I'm now going to load my data. So first of all, you can see my actual column is empty. Uh, my uh, my, my um, group currency also empty, as, as is my, my trial balance. So let's just go ahead and hit the load button. Um, what's going to happen here is board will go back to a source disk system to retrieve the data in. Um, now that could be any number of connections. It could be Green Tree, um, uh, Green Tree, or it could be uh, any number of uh, back-end cloud systems, databases, um, flat files, even. So, uh, and very often we find that customers are needing to bring data in from multiple source systems all at once. So you get a real aggregated view of your um, of your data landscape to allow you to do the budgeting that you need to do. So now we can see those actuals have appeared, uh, and exchange rate conversions have been done, and we can see our trial balance as well. So with the data having been loaded, uh, I just want to review that status. So I can come to a managing reporting screen. Now this screen can be configured as you like, so you're not restricted again to these types of charts or these types of tables. So whatever, what, however you need to portray your information to your business, um, these screens can be configured entirely to your purposes. But we just want to show you here, we can have a mix of capability. We've got some, some scorecards, we've got some KPIs, we've got some indicators charts, graphs, so a real mix of capability in terms of preparing your reporting screens. So what I want to do here is just approve my actuals. I've run through those, and I think they look good to me. So I've got my approval button here. Of course, I can select just some uh, departments or entities. Maybe there's a lag between some departments, um, and I don't want to approve all at the same time, but actually I'm just going to go ahead and I will uh, approve them all. Okay, so they've now been approved, and we'll go back to our wheel. So now you can imagine that we've completed, the system administrator has now completed a month end rollover, and they were now to start ready to start working in, 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 on this new, uh, new set of data. So the first thing perhaps I might want to do is create a forecast. So having four months, four months down, I want to now uh, do a re-forecast for the remaining eight months of the year. So I can come into my, work, my forecast workflow, and once again, I've got a, a, a wheel or a, a, a flow chart of the steps I can take in this, in this section. We'll start off with, the, with start, um, and again, I'll just quickly move through here because it's, it is exchange rate centric, but you, know, you don't have to have exchange rates, but it might be of interest for those that do. Um, I'll just start this process off, and I'll explain what's happening whilst it runs. I'm, I'm just choosing a three by nine forecast, so really what's happening here is that if you can imagine uh, at the first month, uh, you've got one month of actuals, 11 months of, um, of forecast to go. So when you create your first working forecast, you might bring your budget in. And then when you've created your first forecast, that gets saved down. Maybe it's a two plus 10 or whatever you want to call it. Then as you move through the year and you start creating more working forecasts, you've kind of still got your budget in the background, but you're now creating the next working forecast or the next forecast based on your, on your previous saved forecast. So I've chosen three by, three by nine because I've got four months of actuals, uh, and I want to then pick the, uh, the remaining eight months. I want to fill that from my previous three by nine forecast. So that's just being set up in the background. Um, 
So that's just now been completed. Uh, I'm just going to copy some exchange rates in it from, from the previous forecast as well. Um, again, I could change this if I wanted to. Maybe if I think the New Zealand dollar is going to drop a little bit, I can I can change those. Um, but for now, I'm just going to uh, just, just run that through and then generate my forecast. So we'll just get a couple of little messages up here. We've got a PL conversion just been completed. We've also got some down the bottom here, a couple of tick boxes. So you can see here, uh, here we go, that's just completed. So now the second tick has now arrived to indicate that we've definitely completed that process. So with our forecast uh, completed, we can now go and review it. So what we now have is the reporting screen, which is very similar to the one we just looked at when our, when our actuals came into the system. But now we are looking at the forecast that we've created. So um, the observant ones amongst you have noticed there's a new column, which is the forecast to the year end. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, we've still got our original budget, so we can now see how our current forecast compares with the original budget that we set up. Um, and we can see the number here is about 4 million just over. Um, and there's a bit of a variance to the budget, so you know, not tracking so well. And again, we can look over our customers, our top 10, bottom 10. But what I want to show you here is on our, is on our chart here. So we've got a, a, a customer here, Carillion Construction. I'm just going to double click on that uh, dot on the, on the chart. I'm drilling through now to a very detailed view of that particular uh, customer. So I can now come in and um, based upon some local knowledge, I could then further change these numbers if I expect these numbers to be different from what the forecast says. Maybe I'm a, a, a sales manager or a, a product manager. Um, I might want to come in and make some tweaks. Uh, actually, I do because I do know that this customer is in a bit of trouble um, and they're going to go bankrupt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear the forecast for this particular customer um, so that I can then recalibrate my forecast based upon the fact that we're not going to expect any revenue from this particular customer. So we'll just save those down um, and then I'll just rerun the forecast and then we can have a look at the impact of that on, on the forecast and on, on the business in general. Okay, so that's just recalibrated there. I think there's one more to go. Yeah, so now just to recalibrate the cash flow, and then we can come back to our review screen. So now we can see our number has dropped a little bit. So the impact of losing that customer, or the fact that we expect to lose that customer, has dropped our forecast of operating profit down to just over three million. And of course, we can now see they've disappeared off the top 10 customers list. So that's a problem for us, obviously. We, we, we've lost, lost a bit of revenue there. So now there's some other things that we might want to try and do to you know, um, help the business through this period of, of, um, of change by losing this major customer. So once again, I can return to my wheel and I can see uh, that I've got a chance to play with my operational forecast. So let's have a look at that first of all. So now again, what we're seeing is the four months of actuals on my P&L. Um, from, from a cost point of view, and then a forecast uh, of the eight of the remaining eight months, and again their data entry, so I can go and change those numbers. So I can either I can either change them at the month level, or I can change them at the total level. So I can see my indicators as well as showing me where the where the red spots are. We've got one here, um, printing and stationery. So maybe I can I'm going to try and reduce some cost for the remaining uh, eight months of the year to try and. You know, mitigate the loss of that customer. So perhaps we'll make some changes or make some savings in printing and stationery, um, and I'll change that change that number down. Just save that. I don't think that works. Let me just do that again. Oh, for some reason, I it's not <laughs> it's not allowing me to select into a particular cell. Um, but what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get to there is that I could change that number uh, and then uh, I could also break that number back. So I, there's a few options I might have to break that number back over the remaining months. Maybe I want to do a straight line. Maybe I want to uh, do a pro rata or any other kind of um, spreading or break back um, system that you want to choose. Um, you could then break that number back to the remaining months uh, and then commit that number down as a monthly basis. So I apologize for that. I think my web browser is just having a moment. So having done some changes to my operational forecast, um, I might also want to come and review the company's cash flow. 
So what we're looking at here is again a combination of some BI reporting capability uh, with our chart on the right and the bottom right, and then of course our data table. But we can also see the yellow uh, cells again, which is indicating to us that there's some data entry we can do. So really for this particular customer, there are, I guess, three uh, KPIs or three main KPIs that are going to have an effect on the company's cash flow. And those have been the debtor days, the credit days, and also their stop term. So the first thing I want to do is uh, I'm going to come and use my lock and, uh, lock and spread feature again. Uh, and I just want to, uh, across the board, try and get my cash into the business a bit quicker. So I've selected all of my cells. I'm going to use the subtract function and I'm just going to enter the number five so that I can try and uh, I'm going to aim to get my cash in uh, from my clients or from my customers five days uh, quicker. And then also with my creditor days, I'm going to do something very similar um, into my lock and spread. And this time I'm going to set a constant. I just want to push that out to 50 days. So once I've got my money in five days quicker, I'm going to try and keep, keep hold of it for another five days before I pay my creditors. And then I can then reconsolidate uh, my forecast, run that through, uh, and see what effect that has on my cash flow. Of course, um, there could be other KPIs that may be appropriate to you. I mean, with the stock term, for example, that could be important. You know, if you're holding your stock for longer than you need to, there's obviously an implied cost there. So maybe you want to go into a, a deeper stock term model, change your stock term days, maybe even build models that help you manage your stock a bit easier or a bit more efficiently. Um, at this point, also, we can create versions or scenarios. So you might not want to have just one cash flow forecast. You may want to have three or four and you know, make some changes and then compare the three or four together um, in, a, in another screen. Perhaps you have a BI reporting screen where you've, you've got your three or four different scenarios. That you can then see which one would give you the best results. And then you could then pick that one and implement it and, and, and kind of push it forward as a, as a final version of your cash flow. So that's just running through now. It's probably about finished. Um, we should get some messages pop up shortly. So what we're going to see uh, is the chart will uh, instantly recalibrate based upon the latest data that we've just entered. Yeah, sorry, it's just uh, taking a second or two longer than I expected. Here we go. So once again, we get a message that our PL conversion has been completed. And then very shortly, I'll expect to see a message that our cash flow has been created. There we go. So, so that's now updated my chart. You know, and like I said, if I if I had multiple versions of my cash flow, I could build a chart that would compare all of those different scenarios together, and it would give me the option to um, pick the best one that's going to give me the result going forward. So that's kind of brought me to the end of what I wanted to show you in terms of the budgeting capability and the um, uh, and the forecasting capability. We have also seen along the way some some BI. So we've had some charts and some dashboards and also some some reporting tables. There's a, there's a quick feature that I just wanted to introduce you to. So a lot of the things that um, uh, people often struggle with uh, when they're using reporting is that they are, there's often a big um, there's a big panic or there's a big rush around. Uh, approaching reporting periods where you're kind of cutting and pasting data um, from a source system, whether it's Excel or where, wherever it is, into a Word document for perhaps management reporting or PowerPoint slides for you know presentations to the company. So first of all, um, what we're looking at here is the board home screen, and we have these tiles or capsules as we call them. Um, so all the screens that you've been looking at are kind of all a part of a, a part of a capsule. And you can think of those capsules as being functional areas of the business. So up here we've got some HR stuff, we've got some demand planning, we've got some inventory, for example. Um, so you can imagine that maybe once a quarter the team might get together, the management team might together, and then start reviewing the business. So rather than having to go into all of these different places and trying to remember which screen you need to pull up to, to look at the information, you can build a presentation. So the presentation just allows you to uh, pull together um, a whole collection of screens from a whole different um, place, uh, set of places, and then you can just review it in, in one place at, at the same time. Of course, the benefit here is that you're looking at the live data, so there's no preparation time. There's no need to go back and prepare your slides or prepare your PowerPoint deck or your reporting. So you can literally just come in here and look at the screens, and we just see, so I just click forward one there. Um, that first screen there was a demonstration of um, the commentary that you can put into board. I'll just go back one. Bit trigger happy there. I apologise. 
So you can you can do some very rich um, text commentary reporting on your numbers. So again, if you're having a high level meeting, you can pull in um, on the left here. You could have data from various places within your business, all leveraged in the same place, and then you can write some uh, detailed commentary in context with those reporting numbers. Um, and then again, as you move through, which I'm just picking up some various screens here. You could also do salary planning models if you want to. So you're not restricted to purely financial data. Um, you can really leverage board in, in many aspects of your business and bring it all together in one coherent place. Here we have a demonstration of maybe an organization chart so we can put some pictures of the people involved and some KPIs around their departments. And again, workflow. So this is another demonstration of um, whatever the process um, you need, we can build a process that um, fulfills that. So that's just a very quick introduction to the, uh, the presentations feature. Uh, now, just finally, the last thing I want to show you is um, Office Connect. So now I'm looking at a, a Word document, and like I was just alluding to, many people are preparing a management pack or a reporting pack or a, a board pack in Word, and there's, there's a lot of time and effort uh, expended putting these things together. So what we've got here is a Word document. I've just got some standard text. It's a very light document. Uh, there's, a, there's a logo. But more importantly, there's a data table. And this is coming directly from board. So you'll see on my ribbon, I've got the board ribbon, and I can connect. And then I can connect to that. I can sign in as myself. So all the security that um, you may put in place would also invoke here. So you know, there's no back doors. People can't come to the office, add in and start getting the numbers and that they can't get any other way. They, they're still, um, security is implied when you're, when you're accessing the board information through um, the office connection. And then you've got the refresh button here. So it'll just be a matter of coming in opening up your document, hitting the refresh button, and then all the latest numbers in the board database that have been approved or submitted or whatever process is in, is in place will flow through. Now, obviously, um, the numbers there didn't change because I haven't made any changes, but what I'd like to show you is that you can also come into and, and edit this, this um, item here. So I'm just going to come into this edit layout area here, and currently this particular data table is by version and by measure. So I'm just going to take that out, and I'm just going to swap in the business unit. And I'll hit OK. So now you can see that what's, that what's happened is board has um, then refreshed this object within Word, and it's now got a different set of uh, reporting entities. So again, if you have a requirement to change the way that you're reporting, you can very quickly come into board and then just quickly change that, and there's no need to you know, bring in new data or cut and paste from other sources. And of course, it's, uh, I can disconnect, and then I can share that document with anybody that I choose to in, in the same manner. So for me, that's kind of the end of what I wanted to show you. I hope you found it informative. Um, I'd like to hand back to uh, Trish um, uh, for, for wrapping up the uh, presentation with any questions you may have. Thanks, Adam. That was great. Uh, so Hopefully you've enjoyed uh, seeing all those various uh, functionalities that board have. Um, as you have been able to see, the, the product from a, board, from a budgeting and forecasting point of view is um, incredibly functional. Um, and whilst a lot of it looks like spreadsheets, it's far more than spreadsheets and provides all that functionality I mentioned previously in terms of approvals and so on. Importantly, it does have a lot of business process embedded into that, and you will notice those wheels that uh, of the workflow that Adam has been showing you throughout that, whether it's forecasting or the initial budgeting process, um, or as uh, at the end that preparation is a board reports and so on. Star and Board are, um, are, have a partnership, um, and we are a certified partner of Board. Um, and we'd really like the opportunity to be able to show the product to you in further depth or discuss your requirements with you. If you have any questions now, it would be great if you could... Uh, yes, yeah, or, or put them in the chat window and uh, we will uh, um, uh, answer them. So in the chat, you should see in your um, uh, webinar um, panel a chat window. Also, you will have noticed that there is, in your chat window as well, there is a handout that is available for you to download. Uh, and feel free to download that. That is a brochure on board um, budgeting and planning made easy. 
Um, so I'd encourage you to have a look at that. So in the interim, we've well, uh, we've had a couple of people typing uh, a question. Adam, you were showed in terms of the cash flow, uh, debtor credited days and uh, inventory turnover. Could you also say add um, a panel so that uh, uh, interest rates could be entered in there, or perhaps even downloaded from a bank? Uh, certainly, yes. Um, the uh, yes, uh, as I said, the board's capable of carrying all all types of data, and, and interest rates would be no exception. Um, so you could certainly uh, create a table uh, where you could data entry that stuff, like we saw in those yellow cells. Uh, but also, we can have live feeds to um, I don't know Yahoo Finance or RBA or wherever you need, wherever you go to to get your um, uh, get your interest rate information from, and um, we can have um, board automatically um, touch those feeds and bring that data live into the system uh, uh, on an automated basis. Great. So that would mean that you could possibly uh, calculate uh, interest uh, you know, loan repayments and so on, and then embed those into your cash flow. Certainly. Yes. Absolutely. Great. And of course, you could also do versions of that as well. So you could also track how those. You know, if your interest rates are changing on a regular basis, you could also track those changes, and then you could, you know, you could you could compare, you know, this week's with last week's interest rates and see the effect of the and do the variance analysis and all of that, all of that kind of thing. Okay. Also, I noticed in your uh, in your presentation there was a, a a capex expenditure, so you could do a model, for example, that uh, would be uh, a monthly. Um, of your cash, uh, you know, capital expenditure, purchase of vehicles, other equipment, and build that not only into your overall budget and forecast, but also into your cash flow as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so capex is is quite important. Capex often runs on a, on a longer time scale. So we were looking at maybe a, a one year budget. Um, but capex, you might want to have a five-year or a ten-year plan, even for your capex. If you've got vehicles that you depreciate, or buildings, or you know machinery, or anything like that, you can then build a you can build a capex model for for capturing that information. You can then you know apply whichever depreciation model that you, that you would choose, and all of that can then flow into your uh, balance sheet and cash flow um, at, at the appropriate time. Great. Um, we have a question. How easy it is to update the monthly forecast with the uh, actuals as the year evolves? Sorry, can you just repeat? So, how how, how easy to update how, the how forecast with actual? Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah, that'd be very straightforward. Um, you, you just uh, it would just be a question of running running a running a process that will pull in the data, and then. Uh, you can then extrapolate that out uh, which, to whichever requirement uh, you have. So, um, as I said at the beginning, board is not um, rigid in as much that it's kind of a, um, a tool that you have to fit into. It's a very flexible toolkit term platform, and it will allow you to uh, to build a process that exactly matches uh, what you currently uh, do within your business. Right, and you could also then um, bring together information from whether it is, for example, uh, Greentree, that many of our customers have Greentree, um, or a spreadsheet, or perhaps another uh, another database of another company um, that might be a subsidiary or something as well. Yeah, absolutely. So again, one one of the one of the real power points of, of the of the application, and we see it very often, is that people uh, who are using board generally have not got one data source. They've they've got several, in you know, some cases seven to ten different data sources, um, and that's often as a result of you know companies have grown through acquisition. So you've got you know, maybe you've got a a company with three or four subsidiaries, and they're all using a slightly different back end system for their operational um, procedures. Um, but when it comes to kind of consolidating that into a budget, very, very hard, um, and also very, very hard to report as well. So yeah, board can absolutely touch those multiple multiple data, data databases, um, bring it all together, uh, aggregate it into a single place, so you've got that holistic view of an organization, um, regardless of the back-end systems that they're using. Great. So I think that's the, that's the questions that have been uh, put out to us so far. Has anybody else got any other questions? If you have, uh, it would be great to hear them now. Looks like not. So thank you again for attending our webinar today. Um, uh, if you do have any other questions that perhaps you haven't had a, uh, once you have a chance to digest uh, what's uh, what we've discussed today, um, 
please feel free to give uh, um, myself a call uh, or send me an email. And as I mentioned earlier, there is also a handout that is available that can be, uh, that you'll be able to see at the bottom of your webinar screen. So thank you very much and thank you, Adam, for that great presentation. My pleasure.